Welcome back to our channel, my name is Chris Roberts and this is Roberts Dev Talk. Now a couple of months ago I put out some videos about the CSV helper library, how to read and write CSV files in C Sharp. And there are a couple of interesting questions that came out in the comments around those videos. So I thought I'd put another video together that answered those questions and finished off our CSV helper journey. Let's get started. So IRV IRV asked, what if all of our fields of the CSV are separated by a semicolon? How can we get rid of it to create the database? And Igor ZH asked, Hi, please tell me how to change the delimiter. Now this is quite a common issue because a CSV file is comma separated, but of course there are different delimiter types. Sometimes you can have delimiters such as semicolons. So how do you handle a CSV file in CSV helper that has a different delimiter to a comma? Well, let's have a look in VS Code and see how we do it. So first of all, I've created a new CSV file, which is similar to one of the ones we created in a previous video. It's just a list of notable historic rockets. We have the name of the organization who operates the rocket, the rocket name, payload capacity, and the first time it was launched. Now, as you can see, the CSV file has semicolons as a delimiter. So we're going to see how we can configure CSV helper to read a file that uses semicolon delimiters. So let's head over into our program.cs file. Now I've already created a project and installed CSV helper and configured it to read the CSV file. If you'd like to know how to do that, then check out the video linked up above or in the description below. Now we can use the CSV configuration object to control how CSV helper handles the CSV file. And to do that, we'll add a new namespace and that's a CSV helper dot configuration and then before we construct our csv reader we'll create a new object and call it csv config and that's going to be a new csv configuration now into the constructor we'll pass in a culture info and we'll pass in invariant culture this just tells csv helper how to handle things like date formatting and number formatting that kind of thing and instead of closing this out we'll actually open it up with some curly braces and then we'll add in a new property and we'll just set delimiter. And we can just set delimiter to a semicolon. Now, instead of passing in culture info as the second parameter, we can pass in the CSV config. So we'll just update our path to rockets-sc, which is a semicolon. And then we've got a breakpoint at the end of our file. So we'll just run our code with run start debugging so as you can see, we've hit our breakpoint. We'll just pull out our debug panel and open up our rockets enumerable. And we'll see that the rockets have been successfully deserialized into a nice list. We have the organization, rocket name, payload capacity, and launch dates set correctly. Now the next question is asked by Grand Magus. What if you don't have column names? How will you determine header names? Can you tell us a little solution, please? I believe it has something to do with CSV configuration, but I am not sure. And Anushri asked, Hey, can you suggest what will be the changes in code if my CSV file have no header? So thank you for the questions. And yes, Grandmakers, it does have something to do with CSV configuration. So let's jump back into our code and take a look. I've created another CSV file, which has the semicolon delimiter, but notice I've removed the header line which means there are no column names. So we need to be able to tell CSV helper that the first line actually has data in it and there is no header line. So to do that, we can once again use the CSV configuration object. So let's head back to our program CS and we can add another field inside our CSV config. We'll add has header record and set that to false. Now by default, CSV helper, if there are no header names, uses the property ordering within the C-sharp class to map to the columns in the order they appear in the file. So if we look back at our rockets file, notice that the rocket name, organization, payload capacity, and date are in the same order they are in in our rocket info class. So actually, if we were to run this code on its own, this would work. However, this is actually a very fragile way to handle the CSV file because we cannot always rely on our properties being in the correct order in the class. For example, if we go over to our rocket info file and do something as simple as change the order of organization and rocket name, CSV helper will now return a list, but it will map the fields incorrectly. For example, in our CSV file, it will map 
Saturn V as the organization name and rocket name as NASA on the first line because it's looking at the all of the properties appear in the file. So we need a more robust way of telling CSV Helper which columns match which properties in the C-sharp class. And for that, we can use the index attribute on our class to directly tie the ordering of the columns to the properties you want to map. So let's go back into our rocket info file and add a new using statement. And that's using CSV helper dot configuration dot attributes. And we're going to add the index attribute to our organization. And notice the organization is the second column in the CSV file and it's zero based. So that means that the index is one. Now, if we go down to our rocket name and set the index to zero, because this is the first column in the file. And ideally what we want to do is to set the index on all of the properties. So we'll go and add index to payload capacity. And that is number two and index to the first launch date. And that is column number three. So it's zero base. So there are four columns, but we start from zero. Now, if we save that, Let's change our CSV file name to the no header file and then run start debugging. Now, if we pull out our debug panel, have a look at our enumerable, we can see it's returned a list of rockets. If we look at our first one, we'll see that the organization is correctly set to NASA and the rocket name is correctly set to Saturn V. So CSV helper has used the index attribute to work out which column relates to which property in our class. Now there are times when you may not have access to the C-sharp class. It might be sealed or it might be in a library that you have no control over. In this case, obviously you can't add attributes to the properties in the class. What we do have is the class map tool that comes with CSV helper. Now I cover class maps in quite some detail in my CSV reader video, which you can view a link up here somewhere and I'll link down below as well. So if we come over to our rocket info class, we can create a class map. So first of all, let's remove the attributes and come down. Here's one I made earlier, a rocket info class map. Now inside the rocket info class map, I'm going to use the map function. And I'm going to go map and the first property I need to map is my rocket name. So I'll, I'll map m dot rocket name. And then I'll use the dot index extension method, which behaves exactly like the index attribute. So let me just remind myself of the ordering of my columns. So rocket name is at index zero and I'll map my organization name to index one. Now remember that's zero based, so zero is the first column in the CSV file. So I'll just map my other two properties as well. Now if I come back over to my program CS file, I need to register the class map so CSV Helper knows to use it when converting from CSV to object. So I'll set CSV reader dot context dot register class map. I'll register the rocket info class map. And then if I run this again, we'll see if we open up our debug panel and look at our rockets. We can see this has worked exactly the same as using attributes. So if we haven't got access to the class or we just don't like using attributes, we can also use the class map tool. Now it's useful to know that CSV configuration works both for reading and writing CSVs. So if for example, you wanted to create a CSV file that had semicolons as delimiters and uh, had didn't have a header record, then you could do that using the same CSV configuration object. So let's do that. Let's jump into our program.cs and let's move our CSV config out of the stream reader using and let's replace the stream reader with a stream writer and create a CSV writer instead of a CSV reader. Now, uh, for more information on how to create CSV files with CSV helper, then check out the other video which I'll link up here. So let's remove this code here and replace it with a using var stream writer equals new stream writer. We're going to pass in our CSV path Inside here, we'll open up another using block and create a CSV writer and pass in our stream writer, but also the CSV config, the same one that we use for the CSV reader. 
Now we'll get some sample rockets and we'll call write records on CSV writer. We are using the class map, so let's register the class map. Let's change our file name to rockets write.csv. We'll save that and run, start debugging. Notice our code has run and it has created a CSV file for us, rockets-write. Notice we have no header line, it just jumps straight into the data and the semicolon is used for delimiter. So thank you so much for watching this video and for all your engagement on our previous videos. As a small channel, it means so much to us to see so many likes and comments on our videos. It really helps us to grow. We want to build a community around this content to help you and to take you along on our developer journey. So thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do drop a like. And if you like this kind of content, please do consider subscribing as well and tap that notification bell so you know when we upload future videos. Drop a comment below if you've got any more questions about this topic or anything else, and we'll see you next time.